All right, remember your uh, Game of Thrones thing is due today, so make sure it gets rendered out, put into a movie, and then everything gets turned in. And then when you have that all done, then you'll turn in your submission form up here, and that way I know that you're done with your stuff. Um, you can start on, if yours is rendering, you can start on the next assignment, which is the animated stick. So I'm going to open up the animated stick. Just like the other one, you're going to download it from Canvas. <clears throat> And then somewhere I will put it there. Thank you. You extract it to the folder. You rename it. And then um, the, the last time I'm going to mention it, just so write it down so you have it, make sure you copy your preferences every day you come in. So delete the old Maya preferences folder, put your Maya preferences folder in its spot. That way all your hotkeys are there and all your other stuff. Uh, it'll just make your job a lot easier. Uh, if you are rendering while we're doing this and you want to follow along, you can just open up another version of Maya. That's one of the great things about it. You can actually render and work at the same time, which is uh, so I'm going to go to my set project. I'm working on something new. I've opened Maya for the first time. I need to set this to animated stick. Oh. And I forgot that inside here is the actual folder that I need because of how it unzips it. So I will cut that and paste it right there. Then do that again. All right, so this is what this, uh, the start of this assignment looks like, is it's just a stick, and then it has these um, rotators right here. Okay, so there's these little parts that rotate. <clears throat> if you remember from the Game of Thrones one, there was no description as to what each circle did. It would be incredibly helpful if, you know, if it was a stair one, we had a picture of stairs to know this controller will control the stairs. If it was the ones that rolled out, that it was some kind of icon indicating what that was. So as you get more into rigging and you start getting more comfortable with you know, setting your stuff up, you want it to be a bit more descriptive so that somebody coming into your scene can say, oh, I see what this one can do. This one, most likely you can't move it up and down because the arrow is going left and right. And for sure, you can't move it up and down because the arrows are going left and right. Okay. So now all of these that I created, I've just did inside of Illustrator. So you can go into Illustrator, you can draw different paths, and then you can bring those paths into Maya and use them as different icons for your stuff. So when we get into the part where we're doing character rigging, you'll see how that's incredibly important to be able to see exactly what you're trying to move around. Okay. Same thing here. This is the, the same item um, or the same concept. Why aren't you selecting? Don't do this to me, Maya. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. I'm selected. I'm switching out, switching back in. It's not locked. I will right, we'll click on the background. Click off. I have closed Maya and then I will reopen Maya. I didn't do anything, so I'll just not save. Uh, every once in a while, while, Maya will act just like crazy like that, and we just deal with it. It's like an abusive relationship. We just can't walk away. All right, let's try this again. rig. All right, back in action. Cool. All right, so <clears throat> I can click on the top one. I can move it left and right. 
And that's the only thing I can do. I can also grab the rotator here, and you'll notice the direction of the rotation is only going in the Z direction. That's the only direction I can rotate it in, okay? Now, this is not like I created these curves and Maya just knows what to do. I had to set those things up. I had to say, don't allow anyone to move it front and back. Don't allow anyone to move this up and down because I wanted to lock all those features so that you, for your first time, don't screw up the model, okay? As a rigger, your job is to rig something so that the animators don't screw it up, right? So for instance, if I'm rigging a character and I want his arm to bend, that's pretty much as far as I want his arm to bend. I don't want to allow it to go through the character and then pop out the other side. That's not something you would typically do. So a rigger would lock their arm so it can't go any further than absolutely necessary. Um, some rigs do allow that, and obviously the animators just don't do that. Um, all right, so what we're going to be doing with this one is we're going to be animating this thing going across. Now, um, it's kind of funny. I made this, and then uh, later on, um, I found that video with that guy where he's showing the antenna, um, the uh, principles of animation. One of his principles of animation, it was showing, you know, when you're doing follow through, how you can have this thing. And depending on how much follow through you have, something might look like a feather or it might look like an antenna, right? So, this very similar to how this thing is going to animate. Um, as you animate things, because now we're actually getting into something outside of just something very mechanical, we have to understand why things move the way they move. So I'm going to um, go to lighting and say use two-sided lighting. That didn't work. Why is my background black? Five. Uh, I'm just going to hide my background. Geometry. Right, I guess I won't. I guess I will just click the background and I will put on a new layer and then I will turn it off. There we go. All right. So looking at this item, what do you think is the main controlling item of this object? Go left and right. Right? That little base that's on top, that seems to be like the brains of the operation. Okay? So that's going to be what's controlling it. So what's the first thing to move? Yeah, the base thing, right? So that's what's going to control it, all right? So I'm going to set some keys on this, and we'll just see what happens. So I'm going to go here, and because I only have one item that um, is listed here, I'm able to just hit S, and S will just set keys for just that one item. So we don't have to do the right click and then key selected. Incredibly helpful time saver. <clears throat> so let's say I go to frame 60, and then I scoot this all the way over here to this locator. And then I set a key. Okay, so I'm going to rewind it, and I'm going to hit play. Oops. And every single day, I don't know why that is. Let me set my max playback speed to real time. All right, so here we go. Sweet. Done. Um, so what could I do to make this look better? Yeah. Yep, move the hanging part so that it looks like it's interacting with the gravity, with the movement of the character. Um, before I get to any of the stuff below it, I need to make sure that the top piece is what I want. Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I do that is I want to edit his speed. It's perfectly acceptable. He speeds up, he slows, he ramps up, goes a certain speed, and then slows down. Right? That's typically what he would do. Because we're doing more of a cartoony kind of animation, we can really you know, emphasize certain areas. So I can make him like zip across the screen and just like slam into the side if I want to. So I'm going to go to the graph editor. I don't know why all my stuff disappeared. So I'm going to go to the graph editor here. And this is what that graph is looking like. Okay, We didn't have to play too much with the graph editor in the first one. Um, but this is what it's doing. It's going a bit slow at first, picking up speed and then slowing down again, okay? So just like if you were in After Effects class, we dealt with the speed graph, it's very similar. So what I want to do here is I want to take this and I want to stretch these things out so I have a lot more control. These handlebars don't allow me to do that. They're like locked to that size until I unlock it. Um, so under curves, I have to go to weighted tangents. And then under tangents, I have to say free tangent length. 
And now I'm able to stretch this out as far as I want. Okay. Now, the fact that I only have one item here listed is an extreme help because otherwise I'd have so much stuff going on, it'd be very difficult to see uh, anything. So what this should do is really go pretty slow at the beginning and then go super quick and then slow down right at the end. That's what that should do. So let's see if I am right. Okay, it didn't go super quick, but it went quicker. Uh, I'm gonna make it go even quicker by shrinking this line. Okay, wherever we see more horizontal lines, we're gonna have slow motion. Wherever we see more vertical lines, we're gonna see fast motion. Now all of that is relative to a keyframe here and a keyframe there. If I put a keyframe at zero and I put a keyframe at 20,000, no matter what I do, that animation is going to go super slow. Okay, I have to make sure that these keyframes are still within a good range where I have time to, to tweak things. So we'll see where that's at. Oh, just get that down. Play. So it's a bit quicker. I really want that to be <clears throat> a lot quicker. So I'm going to take this keyframe and just scoot it over. And because I scooted it over, I'm going to take that handle and pull that back. Okay. The frames are up on top, so I can see here's frame 40, so I moved it back 20 frames. This should be uh, much quicker than it was a second ago. Well, it's quicker, but it's still not as quick as I want that. I want that thing to like really slam into that side. There we go. So this should be pretty slow, and then really kind of slam into it. So we will see. There we go. That's what I want. All right. Boom, all right, so that's, that's a very impactful hit. All right, so now we're happy with the top motion. And this is why it's so important to get the top motion right, because if I had played with all the bottom stuff, and then I realized I didn't like the top of it, well, now I have to go back and redo all the bottom stuff again, okay? So now that I'm happy with the way the top's looking, uh, I can start playing with these. Now, each one of these it has a separate rotation to it. So if I grab this one and rotate it, it does that. If I grab the next one and rotate, it does that. If I grab the next one and rotate, it does that. Now, when I grab this first one, let's say I'm in wireframe, um, it's hard to see, but I am grabbing all of these, okay? Because of how Maya parents things together, um, this item will control all of those. So as I rotate it, it's rotating all five of those. But now, just because it's rotating all five doesn't mean it's giving me the same um, animation as if I were to rotate each one individually. So look at how I can grab each one of these individually and rotate them. And now I'm getting kind of like this tail whipping type thing. Okay. So if I do this and I marquee, that grabs all five of those separately. And the reason I want to do that is because you saw how slow it was for me to click, deselect, click, deselect, click, deselect. By grabbing all five of them, I'm able to rotate all of them individually, and then I get that little tail whip. So now I want to animate this thing. Um, I know that this goes to about frame 30. Okay, so that's my frame of reference. And then I also want to look at when it really starts to pick up speed. So right... I think it's about 18 or 19. I guess it'd be like 20, I say. Let's say it's 20, okay? So 20, it's going to really ramp up and go super quick. So when should this start moving? Immediately, right? The, the top's moving, so the bottom's going to move also. So I set my first keyframe to say I want you to... At frame one, you're going to start moving. And then at frame 20, which is what we said is where it starts ramping up really quick, it's going to move. So based on how far it moves from 1 to 20, how much rotation should I have? Tell me if that's too much or too little. Too much. Tell me when it's good. Right there. Like that? That? That's too much. <laughs> With the way he's moving, probably that much. Okay? 
because he's moving like super slow. So that tail or whatever it is, is just going to be kind of like hanging behind just a hair. So I'll set a key on that. So now watch what we do. It goes, and it feels right. I mean, you can look at it and you can see, hey, the, the speed that he's moving, it feels right. You're not going to know that it, it's, that was too much until you do it. And then you see like that look wrong. Okay. Now just for fun, let's crank it up. And you'll see how ridiculous this is going to look, <laughs> right? The motion of the bottom does not match the motion of the top. There's no reason for that to happen. So let's undo that key and now we're back to there. Okay. So now we stop at 30, right? That's where his last keyframe is. Yep. Okay. So now what's going to happen at 30? This way? The other way? All right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so it went backwards because the, the momentum of the top was pushing it. But we never set a keyframe there to say when we want to swap over, right? So let's go back. So at frame 30, it's actually going to be like that, OK? Because the speed is so much. He's going to be flipped backwards. Oops. I have to go to actual 30. There we go. Yeah, I know what you meant. <laughs> now, after 30, that's when it's going to flip the other way. So let's say 35. And again, you're not going to know where these keyframes are. The purpose of that first assignment is getting comfortable with setting keyframes and then moving them until things look good. OK? So now we'll go there. Okay, now let's look at this too while we're doing this, all right? So here's the rotate Z, negative 30, roughly. So do you think this will be able to go all the way up to negative or to positive 30? No, okay? If you know anything about physics, if I drop a ball from here, I'm not throwing it, I'm just dropping it, it's impossible for the ball to hit the ground and go higher than he originally was, okay? So if I drop this tail, it's not going to go the same distance. How far? Who knows? I know it's going to be under 30, so let's go to 19. Okay, and then we'll set a key. And then we rewind it, and then we hit play. Sweet. So now we see it. Now there is this, um, there is this thing with how our eyes work, and what we're seeing here is two different things. So this thing is hitting, and then this thing is coming over. So there's actually, it feels like there's still a delay happening. So I'm going to hit play, and we'll watch it again. So it comes in, doop, doop, right? It feels like there's a little bit of a delay. We will take care of that delay after, so just ignore the delay for now. All right, so it does that, and then let's say that after this, it's probably coming to rest, right? So that's going to go the other way. So what I do is I focus on this number. That's 18 now. So before it was at negative 30, then we went to 18. So it's going to be less than 18, OK? Same principle. So let's just say for fun, I set it to 10. And then I'm going to go up another five frames, and then I'm going to set this to 5. And I'm not typing it in. Don't type things in. Just put it over there. And then I'm going to put this to negative something, and then put this to that one I'll type in as zero. zero. OK, so there we go. OK. All right, so now that feels better, right? We can look at it, and we can assess, hey, that animation feels good. There may be a spot that doesn't, like maybe it goes too slow or too quick or whatever, and we need to adjust it. So I set these at five frames apart, OK? They're basically the same exact amount of movement. If I use my dope sheet, and let's say that I just grabbed these and just kind of pushed these in a little bit further. Because I'm new to animation. I don't know how far apart things should be. So but let's say that I just put these two frames apart. Set that down there too, right? So it still feels good, but now we're getting a different impression of what that item is, right? 
So just like he talked about in that video, it's the difference between being a feather or being something like an antenna is what we're getting. Now, because of this movement right here at this part, it doesn't really feel like an antenna because why would it fling back so far here but not there? Uh, so one of those would have to change. Now let's say I go the other way. I'm going to go like really far. Like that, like that. And what I'm doing is just looking at spacing. That's all I'm looking at. So let's see how that looks. Right, we kind of lost some of our momentum, like right when it hits, it feels like it's really like slow all of a sudden, okay? Now, people will mix these up too. So sometimes they'll be like fast and sometimes these will be slow. Uh-oh is right. <laughs> right? So it's kind of like jerky in how it's moving. It's not fluid. I can go close together. I can go far apart. But I can't mix them up like that. Okay? I can't have it like that. I can even get progressively shorter. Progressively longer doesn't really make sense. But progressively shorter between the keyframes. But I can't mix them up. Okay? And what I mean by progressively shorter is that the distance here, so this is where it hits, okay? So this is our first one where we're just kind of like letting it rest. So I'm going to take this one and give it a big space. So that's how big that space is. And then the next one will have less of a space. And then the next one will have less of a space. And then the last one will have less of a space, okay? So what's going to happen is that each one of those movements is going to go quicker and quicker and quicker each time. But because they're moving less, we shouldn't really notice anything like disgusting about it, right? So that's, that still feels good. It still feels like that could work, OK? So there's lots that we can do in the dope sheet with this, playing with the spacing of those keyframes. And there's also a lot we can do uh, with just like what the values are. If I cranked up the value here, like I did, I pulled that really far back, that gives us some indication as to what this item is. Um, if I let it go like this, that would again give us an indication like this is a really stiff object because that item is flying and it's staying pretty rigid. Okay, so we have to play with that as well. Um, and then the last thing I want to do, like this already looks pretty good. Okay, cool. Um, and you guys have already said the answer to um, the main controlling object is what again? That one, right? Okay. So if well, who is he controlling? Nope. He's well, he's controlling the plate. Okay. So what is the plate moving? That one. That's the only one that the plate moves. He moves this one, and he moves this one, and he moves that one, and so on. Okay, so like when you, uh, when a dog wags its tail, at the very tip of the tail, it's wagging, but then the next bone controls the next one, and the next bone or muscle controls the next one, and the next muscle controls the next one. It's not a all at the same time kind of thing, right? So if there's a delay between this one and that one, then there should be a delay between this one and that one, and this one and that one, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these bottom pieces here, and I'm going to offset each one of those just a smidge. Um, I have to make sure I grab them in the correct order. One, two, three, four, five. It makes it easier to visualize inside here if they're one, two, three, four, five, because I know which one's going to control the next one. So I'm going to go to um, number two, and I'm going to offset it two frames. Uh, actually, I'll do one frame. Do one frame. I'm going to go to number three and offset that one frame past that, four, and then five. Okay, so now what this is going to do is everything is going to be um, assisting other things. So now look at my keyframes in the bottom, lots of keyframes. Um, we had the same amount, but now it just looks like more. So now watch the tail. Okay, it feels a lot more lifelike just because we offset each one of those. 
Now we have to do it in this order. We have to animate all those pieces together because that mess on the bottom is something we don't want to have to deal with. Okay? So we animate everything together, everything nice and fluid, and then we can come back and we can tweak it from there. Now depending on how detailed we want to go with this, we can really get into a lot more theory about how this thing works, right? So just like um, Oops, where's my move? Okay. Just like the, um, the way that energy gets transferred from one object to another, okay? So this item here is moving. It's transferring some of its energy to the bottom one, and that's how it's moving, and then it's transferring some energy to that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, okay? It's never 100%. So the first item has the most energy, the second one has the least, or the next, and then so far down the list. So what I mean by that is that as these things rotate, the top one should spin the most, the bottom one should rotate the least, okay? So if I go into grab all of these again, if I go to my graph editor, now it's a mess, right? <laughs> uh, it's simple if you just look at one at a time, okay? So number one, which is the top, this one is gonna have the most energy, so it's gonna have the biggest swings, okay? So it's gonna rotate way down here at negative 30 and way up here at 18.899. Number two should be less. It doesn't matter what the number is, it should just be less, okay? So if I kind of keep an eye on these lines here, which are the values, I can just move this to let's say five down here and move this to about there. Now when I go to number three, I move that one even less and then I move this one even less. And then when I go to number four, I just continue the same thing. And just making sure, just like before, that we don't uh, have one rotating too far. Now, I'm only doing it to the first two, but I should do it to all of them. All right, so now let's see. Well, I'll just scoot that in. I have to do it to all of them because it's going to bother me if I don't. Oops, yeah, that's right, and then this is right, and that, okay, and then number three, scoot that one down, scoot this one up, all right, and then number two, just a little bit, just a little bit, okay, so now if I grab all of these, this is what I'm seeing, and again, now it's even more confusing because we have all these keyframes on top of each other and moved over. You can follow each one, um, like if I follow this line here, it comes there, and then it goes straight up to this, and then it comes down to there. Um, I think one of these is not right. This one is there. This one's there. Yeah, this one here should not be there. This should be, this one should be down more, this one should be down more. Because they should be, you see the angle, and then there should be an angle there too, so. Angle, angle, pretty close, good enough, okay. So now let's go back, and we'll hit play. All right, so that actually took a little bit of the life out of it because we've kind of diminished all of those. So if I want to bring it back, what I should do is make those values even more, okay? So this is where when you do this um, for your first time, go into it with the understanding that you're simply playing with how do I set keyframes and how do I get a nice smooth motion. You're going to do this one two times. One is just for fun, playing around, understanding the keyframes, understanding how to get the offsets and everything. The second one, you're going to have a bit more freedom. Okay, We'll unlock all of these controls so then you can actually play with it and create a little animation of this thing so that's a little bit more interesting than just doing that. Okay. Um, Let's grab this again. So let's say that for now, I wanted to then take this and move it the other way, right? So I'm gonna grab all of these, and life just is easier if you just simplify it, so I'm just gonna delete all those keyframes. Um, this goes here, and then it's gonna go back. There we go. So he goes, and then comes back. I'm going to go to the graph editor and just fix this. So he's going to go like that and like that. 
And I think I want this one here to kind of ramp into it. Hmm. Well, let's see how that looks. Oops. Nope, I definitely need a pause there. That's like, that's a weird movement. So I'm going to go to 30. I'm going to middle click on 40 and then set a key. Middle clicking in your timeline does not update your timeline. So if I need to like, this is what I wanted to do, I middle click somewhere else and I can set a key there. Okay, so now I can just go to the graph editor and just fix this mess that I created. Let me just grab that and flatten it. And then um, I'm gonna hit this button here. This breaks my tangents. So that now I can grab this and just do that. So now let's see what that looks like. And then I think I want this one to be really fast right here. So again, I will break my tangent. These are also under here. So if you can't see which button I'm clicking on in the video, then you can just obviously search there. There we go. Sweet. Okay. So now I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to set a key at the beginning. At 20, I have a little rotation. Because I know that I'm going to be exaggerating this later, or um, softening this later, I'm going to go a little bit more than I should have. Okay, just a little bit. And then I'm going to go up to 30 where it's crazy. I'm going to crank it back even more. And then I'm going to set a key at, let's say, 40. Now, 40 is when it starts to take off, right? So from 30 to 40, it's at rest. But then at 40, it takes off again. So it goes here. That's pretty good. Boom, it hits. It comes up. And then 40, it goes away again. So what do you think the tail is going to be doing from 40 onward? Right. So we could do that. We could keep it up like this. That's an acceptable thing too. But most likely it would be exactly that, straightened out. So in order to straighten it, I have to manually go in there and kind of grab these and kind of angle it like this. Now what probably would happen too, probably those back two because of wind resistance would be kind of flapping around. I would not do the flapping around yet. I wait until I get all my basic animation first, then I come back and then I can add the little flapping around. I'll grab all my stuff. Set a key, and then see how that looks. Horrible. <laughs> okay. And the reason it looks horrible is because it wouldn't transition from here all the way to 80 to do that. It would pretty much do it probably about, well, let's say 42, it would, it would be down there. Okay. So I'm going to use my dope sheet and just move my keyframe from 80 straight down to about there. There we go. All right, and then once it gets to about this point, I'm going to set a keyframe on all these, go up to where it stopped, and then just let it kind of come to rest. And I have to type in the value for that. So that looks pretty good there. Okay. Now I want to give this a little bit more movement, right? So I'm happy with the way this is moving so far. So I'm going to go to, um, let's say, 55 here. And I'm going to grab this one and lift it up. And then pull this one down. And then pull that one up. Okay, so just those three, I'm going to set a key on there. Then I'm going to go to 58, let's say, and then do the opposite. So what I'm doing here is I've done my basic animation, made sure that looked good, and now I'm tweaking the rest of it. That's fine there. Oops. Then I'll go up a little bit more. 
Pull this up. Pull that down. Now there will be a point where we just don't have enough keyframes to really capture that motion. So we may have to exaggerate it even further just to get the idea across. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Sweet. So I don't care what it does there. Oops, that's what I'm looking for. So that, that seems to fit. Mm, that's cool. OK, and now I can do the same thing we did before, which is grab all of these, go to the dope sheet. Uh, when I marquee them, you can see that they're in backwards order. So one is on the bottom and five is on the top. So that when I do my offset, I have to offset it this way first. When one was on the top, I offset it the other way, meaning that the one was the first one, and then two was over to three, four, five. And then, of course, we could have some follow through at the end of that, too, if we wanted to or whatever. Sweet. So I'm going to save this as so I don't ruin the original one. Sarcona stick zero one. one. All right. So uh, when you get a chance, whether you're working on the Game of Thrones one now, or you're rendering the Game of Thrones one, or whatever it is, open up the stick rig, animate that platform going back and forth, make sure you're happy with that, and then start animating that stack. Get to the point where you can read what this thing is supposed to be doing. When it hits a block, should it be jumping? Where are you setting the keyframes? How far are you moving things? And just do a little animation with that. Have me check it, and then we'll go on to the next part when you're ready for that next part. Probably won't be till Monday of next week. Okay. Questions? Okay.